We begin in Israel and a corruption case that centers on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's attempts to control the media, a story that also exposes the degree to which certain Israeli news outlets are willing to sell out their coverage. Elections are just weeks away, and Netanyahu is looking at charges of bribery, fraud, and breach of trust. One of the cases alleges the Prime Minister agreed to limit the distribution of one newspaper, Israel Hayom, in exchange for positive coverage in another, Yediot Aronaut. He's also accused of offering a telecoms company, Bezek, lucrative government contracts, buying, in effect, positive news coverage on a website owned by the same company, a news site called Walla. The attorney general handling the case says Netanyahu even had a hand in choosing which editors and reporters Walla would hire or fire. Prime Minister Netanyahu is using the fake news defense, calling the case a witch hunt cooked up by political rivals and their friends in the media. It's a line he's used before, but the victim narrative is starting to sound a little unconvincing. Our starting point this week is Tel Aviv. בתולדות התקשורת הישראלית. התקשורת בסופו של דבר היא זו שמפילה אותו. שידורים מיוחדים, חגיגות באולפנים. ולא בגלל שהיא חשפה שחיתויות שלו. כי מה קורה עכשיו בתקשורת? אלא בגלל שהשחיתות שלו היא הניסיון להשתלט על התקשורת. המסקנה היא שסיקור חיובי זה שוחד, רק אם קוראים לך נתניהו. זה באמת סגירת מעגל מושלמת. This is a first in Israeli political history. A sitting prime minister faces indictment on multiple counts of corruption and media manipulation. The telecom and media baron getting contracts and bribes from Benjamin Netanyahu in return for favorable coverage, Shaul Elovich. The man who issued the indictment notice, Attorney General Avahai Mandelblit. In his written ruling detailing the grounds for indictment, Mandelblit walks us through an extensive system set up by Netanyahu to control media coverage of himself, his government, and his family. It's damning. However, supporters of the Prime Minister argue he was left with little choice. All the cases have to do with the media. Why was Netanyahu so involved in the media? Why did he try to meddle so much with it? Nobody's asking that question. Could it be that Netanyahu is vilified by the media more than any other prime minister in the Western world? There's no prime minister or president anywhere that's so savagely criticized. Day in, day out. Well, it's poetic justice, isn't it? The thing that was most important to him finally brings him down, you know. He's blaming the whole world. Everybody now is a lefty. Everybody now is out to get him. The media, the attorney general. Well, Mr. Netanyahu, if you're watching, I'm not out to get you. I'm just really, really sorry that this happened. The Prime Minister's contentions that he is up against some kind of left-wing media conspiracy fail the scrutiny test. The Attorney General leading the investigation, Avihai Mandelblit, was appointed by Netanyahu himself. Two of the prosecution's key witnesses, reported to have provided the most incriminating evidence, are former confidants of the Prime Minister. And details of what is being called Case 4000, involving Israel's biggest telecom company, Bezek, which owns the online news site Walla, paint a picture of elaborate media manipulation. Police allege the Prime Minister's relationship with Bezek's CEO, Shaul Elovich, was based on bribes. Netanyahu provided Bezek with government contracts and regulatory favors in return for not just flattering coverage of his government, but a hand in the way the website operated. Police say that from 2012 to 2017, the Prime Minister or his staff blatantly intervened hundreds of times and on a near daily basis, often calling Ilovich in the middle of the night to demand changes in the coverage. There are recordings in which Netanyahu speaks with Ilovich, 
who then passes messages on to Alain Yeshua, the CEO of Walla. So it's obvious that Netanyahu tried to intervene. We spoke with Walla's journalists, asking them how come there were positive articles on Netanyahu as well as negative ones. Were you for or against him? They explained that what we were seeing was the tip of the iceberg. Underneath, there was a constant battle about whether to follow the orders that came from Netanyahu or for the editorial team to just do its job. Looking at Walla workers, at Walla reporters and Walla junior editors, I think that some of them were maybe too young and they, they couldn't see the big picture, but it was not only on their uh, shoulders. It was a matter of the, their uh, chief executive editor and the director of the company. Those were the people that did it. The Netanyahu-Alovich relationship resulted in politically driven material like this video. It first appeared on the Prime Minister's website on the morning of March 17, 2015, the day Israelis voted in the last general election. Within minutes, it was on Walla's homepage, where it would remain. On the orders, say prosecutors, of the Prime Minister's office. That video, the Arabs are flocking to the polls, which is just pure incitement, was on the homepage for a whole day. It was disgusting, totally unjournalistic and rather immoral. Then there were dozens of articles and photos of Sara Netanyahu helping Holocaust survivors, for instance. Now, it's one thing to post such pieces, which really have zero news value, but to then take down other articles, such as the piece on the poverty report in Israel, actual information that is important, that was a disproportionate favor. Did I know things were as complex and detailed as the indictment shows? No, I had absolutely no idea. I didn't know that they were actually helping choose images for specific articles. I didn't know that Sara Netanyahu herself was sending text messages. If we would have known about it, Walla would not have had any reporters left. Case 4000 and the communications between Netanyahu and Alovich is just one of the corruption allegations under investigation. There's also Case 2000, backed up by secretly recorded conversations in which Netanyahu offers to support legislation that would limit the distribution of the country's most widely read newspaper, Israel Hayom, a free tabloid, in return for favorable coverage in the biggest traditional paper on the market, Yediot Aeronaut. The prosecutor's announcement of a coming indictment happened just weeks before an election in which the Netanyahu campaign clearly has the media in its sights. Posters have sprung up featuring journalists' faces and bearing the slogan, they will not decide this election. <laughs> Netanyahu's team has also launched a Facebook broadcast to quote, throw the fake out. In the increasingly polarized Israeli media space, there are still voices the Prime Minister wants to hear, avowed allies. Some of whom can be found at news outlets like Channel 20. I don't get it. When the leftists criticize and attack Netanyahu, it's considered journalistic integrity. But when a right-wing journalist says he supports the prime minister and thinks he's doing a great job, then suddenly I get attacked for my journalistic integrity? Have you ever asked a left-wing journalist about their integrity? You never have. Why do you only ask me? There should be one standard for all the media. One standard. Standard As for whether this indictment can play in Netanyahu's favor, the answer is absolutely yes. Part of his genius is that he realized how to use this. They often say that after each Netanyahu scandal, his party gets an extra two seats in the elections. This time we're right in the midst of an election, and the indictment helps Netanyahu push the idea that the leftist media, the patronizing media, is trying to dethrone him. Netanyahu has turned the media into the biggest demon, and this indictment, in my opinion, 
is only making his campaign stronger. In previous elections, Netanyahu built an enemy in the shape of Iran, Hamas and Hezbollah. Today, the situation isn't one that enables him to build an enemy from the outside, and therefore he's building up the media and the justice system to be the enemy, saying, they're trying to bring me down.